morning, guys. So I fell a little bit behind on my vlog missing because I got a little bit sick, a little bit of the wintry sniffles. And so today um, I'm going to be starting to make the dummy. I definitely didn't finish it. And um, I'm going to be just doing this without actually talking to you guys. I will save you from my red sniffly nose um, and my general <laughs> disarray. So it'll be a lot of me and, and my slippers. First things first, having a nice studio clean. To be honest, I didn't even work in here, but I wanted to figure out what supplies I was using to make the dummy, and I just needed to clean to clear my head. But in the end, I decided to gather the most important supplies. So we have um, index cards, we have these dark chocolate lint uh, peppermint truffles, and we have this trusty old eraser and just some mechanical pencils. And I decided to move this whole operation to the couch because you know how it is when you're sick. Like, <laughs> you have to be surrounded by cushions at all times. I also... Uh, need to be surrounded by as many Christmas movies as possible today. So I, I think I decided to go with the Grinch um, who stole Christmas for the first one. So step two is, I don't even remember what step one was. Okay. But anyway, um, step two is um, making the rough thumbnails. So these are basically just um, tiny versions of each of your spreads. A spread is two pages in a book. So the first thing to decide is the dimensions of your book. Do you want it portrait, landscape, or square? Um, usually if you do it landscape, you get a little bit more real estate. So that's kind of the most common, but sometimes square is pretty cute. I'm doing a landscape book because I want a lot of real estate to relay as much information as possible about Paris and Mr. T. So um, I went ahead and drew the line down the middle and numbered each page. Kind of interesting note that the pages actually start 3, 4, and then they go on. 1, 2 is the title page, so you don't get that real estate. And then basically I just um, spent the day sketching and using my phone and Google image search as like my references. I didn't get as far as I wanted to get to tell you the truth because this is a conceptual phase and I honestly feel like my mind has to be so on point for conceptual phases. Like you're creating something out of nothing. It's not the same as just executing a painting where you kind of know what you're doing. So I did not get very far at all and I wasn't super happy with my progress either. I was kind of feeling like I was just getting out like the first um, most obvious visual solutions that came to mind instead of really digging in because I want this to be a really like visual and rich and nuanced book. <laughs> uh, so I decided to just like let it be and not force it because you know what, I'm sick. Um, and that is what it is. So I would rather kind of like take my time and enjoy the process of doing this. Some of the things that you want to consider when laying out your pages and putting together your dummy are what makes people turn the page? Is it something about the text? Is it something about the illustration? Um, what is that creating that sort of pull to page turn? What do all of the illustrations look like as a whole? Are you giving people enough space to breathe visually? I find that I really like to do some pages that are chock full of things and some pages that are really, really minimal to just give them that like room to come up for air. Do your pages look balanced? 
Um, are they adhering to some of the basic principles of design? Is there a focal point? Is there a hierarchy? Are your words competing with your images? Or is there a natural flow of how you want the viewer um, to explore the page almost, how the page unfolds? So step three, after in theory I create all of these thumbnails, what I actually do, and not everyone does this, a lot of people just stick with the rough pencil sketches of the thumbnails to create their dummy, but what I usually do is create what I call minis. These are miniature versions of the spread. I do them in color. Um, painting is so integral to my process, so I do feel like color is just necessary to relay what I'm, the feeling I'm trying to relay. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze right now. <clears throat> So I take each spread and I paint these little minis and it's a great time also for me to figure out um, the techniques that I want to use and how I want everything to feel, the color palette and all of that kind of stuff. This is um, my mini, these are my minis for Everything Wonderful, which is a book that I submit with my agent last year about a little penguin named Flip. The next step is actually laying out your dummy. So what I do with these is I scan them in and um, I go ahead and I don't do too much correction with them or anything like that because they are actually supposed to look rough. Um, editors sometimes get uncomfortable when your book looks too finished, apparently. Um, but I put all of these in Instagram and I go ahead and I lay out the text. It is important to note that this is not actually an illustrator's role. Um, traditionally, it's an art director's role. However, for a dummy, I think it's really important to think just about how you envision the text. Do you want it more of a traditional serif font? Do you want it sans serif? Do you want it straightforward on the page? Do you want it to interact with your visuals? Do you want to illustrate text? Um, these are all things that I'm right now asking myself for um, a T-Rex in Paris and that's why I just don't want to rush the process of putting together this dummy for the sake of making a video about it if you know what I mean um, so I think realistically this is gonna take me like a few more weeks to get it in a state where I'm ready to send it because it's got to be excellent but a dummy is just a really nice way to let editors see your whole vision basically um, you can say so much with illustrations that you can't say with words in a manuscript, so I highly recommend creating a dummy. Um, I think that it, it really helped me um, at least tell the Everything Wonderful story, and I think it's going to be really great for Mr. T-Rex. So that is all I have to say about that. I'm not 100% sure when the next video is coming. Um, but it should be within the next few days. So I hope you guys are feeling a little bit better than I am. And until I see you again, TTFN.